Proverbs 16 and 25 reads, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Right? Hey, it says there's a way that seemeth right to a man. Right? Whatever you think. If it's outside of thus saith the Lord, hey, the end of that is death. There's only one way that leadeth to life, righteousness, and salvation. Right? Wide is the way and the gate that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life. Like I brought out in Jeremiah 6 and 16. The old path. Where is a good way? Right? Second Ezra 76 talks about that path on the kingdom. On the way to the kingdom and to rest. How on both sides is fire and water. We might touch on that in a minute. Right? Let me bring this out. In the book of Proverbs 28 and 26. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26, and it reads, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Once again, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26 reads, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely he shall be delivered, right? The heart is deceitful and, and desperately wicked, right? It said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, right? Proverbs 28 and 26, if you want to trust in your own heart, you don't want to trust in the Lord, you don't want to trust in each precept, Proverbs 28 and 26 calls you out. It says, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered, right? So he that trusts in his own heart is a fool, right? Let me get this in the book of Proverbs chapter one, verse seven. To say that you know the Lord. You don't know the Lord, right? You're in error. Proverbs one and seven, it reads, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Knowledge, that word know is a prefix in the word knowledge. Proverbs 1 and 7, once again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. See what I'm saying? It said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right? The fear of the Lord. This is the first step in getting right. This is the first step in redemption. This is the first step in repentance. <laughs> this is the book of Sirach chapter 1 and verse 26 let me bring this out real quick this is the book of Sirach chapter 1 and verse 26 and it reads if thou desire wisdom keep the commandments and the Lord shall give her unto thee right it said if you desire wisdom keep the commandments and the Lord hey the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Right? One more time. This is Sirach chapter 1 and verse 26, and it reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it was... This is Sirach chapter 1 and 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. Right? Keep the commandments. That's the law of of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot to keep the commandments, right? Let me bring this out. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 2, and verse 15. And it reads They that fear the Lord will not disobey his words, and they that love him will keep his ways, right? Hey, it said, They that fear the Lord will not disobey his words. Thus says the Lord. This is what we submit to. This is where we should do our understanding with and replace. This is what we replace our understanding with. Right? Whatever we were taught, we reject it. And this is what we fill our cups with. The knowledge of Yahweh while Yahweh shine. Once again, this is Sirach chapter 2 and 15 and it reads, They that fear the Lord will not disobey his words. And they that love him will keep his ways. Right? So what's the love of God? 
What is love according to the Bible? This is why we come out to tell our people what love is according to the body and hope that they get it together, all right? They that fear the Lord, hey, they're gonna follow his ways because that's what love is. We're gonna go into that real quick. I believe it's John 15 and 10, John 14 and 15. Let me bring this out real quick. What is love according to the Bible? Because if I were to stop any of these Jake that are walking around and ask them, what is love? Do I have different definitions, right? It's broad, it's ambiguous. But according to the Bible, what love is, is clear, it's concise. It's something that the believers can agree upon. Like it says in Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together? We agree. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you that, hey, you have no divisions among you. So if you ask brothers that aren't the knowledge, what is love? We'll tell you what love is. And love, I'm going to ask you, how you doing today, brother? What is love? What's your definition of love? Jay look, Jay look a little unstable, but it's all good. What is love? Huh? He said love is bearing with your brother and your sister. Uh, love. That's one definition. He said love, the first definition, he said is bearing with your brother and bearing with your sister. Give me another definition of love. 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 He said love never give up. All right, I'm not mad at you, brother. And, and that just is a case study to prove my point. If I were to ask 10 people what love is, each of them would give a different definition. I asked you for one definition and you gave three because it's something that you really can't put your finger on because it's based upon how you feel, right? And feelings can change. If you have a child and you tell your child, while I'm at work, don't carry your ass outside. And that child go outside and you beat. Is that love? That's not love. So correction is love. They call it tough love, but it's love. Because God, who he loves, he chastens us too. And the majority of our people are not mindful of the scourges. But here it is. That's love, but it's a negative connotation. Let me tell me, an ass whooping is love? <laughs> so you get fed up with that love. Being disobedient. And now you're gonna whip it. You know why? Because if he continue not to listen to you, when you at work and he outside, something worse could happen to him. So that's why the parents say, this gonna hurt me way more than it hurt you before you get that ass whooped. Yeah. Because they understand that you a child in correction, it's a open rebuke is better than secret love in the Bible. So I wanna go into the biblical understanding of what love is real quick. You wanna hear it? Right, this is what the Bible says about love. It says, John chapter 15, verse 10, it reads, If ye love me, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Right? So here, it says, If ye keep my commandments, hey, you shall abide in my love. He's like a father. If he tell you don't eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, that's how you show you love. Because he got commandments. And when you're obedient to his commandments, that's how you abide in his love. Don't lie, steal, cheat, commit adultery, murder. So I want to let you know one more precept on what love is according to the Bible, right? 
This is a part of correction, or what you call a light rebuke, an admonishment. Because what you thought love was, according to the Bible, love is simply doing what God tells us to do, keep his commandments. Right? This is John chapter 14 and verse 15. It reads, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love God, what you going to do? Keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Right? Let me bring this out in the book of John chapter 2 and verse 16. All right, John 2 and 16. All right, let me go to 1 John. This is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hey, I appreciate you stopping to give me that word, brother. Hey, oh, hey, get your, hey, you gotta make sure you get your weapons. You might need it out here. Hey, that's right. Hey, the scriptures say no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Huh? Hey, hey, but, but hey, your life is in God's hands. The devil can't take you out unless God gives him permission. I got a couple more precepts. I got a couple more precepts that I'm gonna go into before I get out of here. Uh, real quick, we're gonna touch on the mind. All right, this is the book of Mark, chapter seven and verse 21. So that just shows you, this world, they don't know what love is. Only the true believers know what love is. All right, this is Mark chapter seven and verse 21, speaking on the mind, All right? It says, for from within out of the hearts of men proceed evil thoughts. Adulteries, fornications, murders, death, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil lie, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. This is what comes out of men's wicked and deceitful hearts. Right? Mark 7 and 21 lets you know why we should subdue our own understanding. Why the heart is deceitful above all things. Mark 7 and 21 lets you know what comes out of the hearts of men. Let me bring this out one more time. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil lie. Blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Right? Let me bring this out in 1 Timothy 1 and 9, out of the T section. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, in verse 9 and it reads knowing this that the law was not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient for the ungodly and for sinners for the unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and mothers of mothers for manslayers for whoremongers for them that defile themselves with mankind for men stealers for liars and for perjured persons and if there be any other thing that is contrary to child doctrine Right? This is why it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Because it said here, knowing that this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. This is why we were cast headlong into another round of slavery. Because we were lawless. The righteous of our nation had to go in captivity right along with the wicked. Right, but this is why the Most High chose us and gave us a law that this be our wisdom in the sight of the nation. He understood the mind of his people. This is why he chose us to be given a law that we could represent him. He put his name on us and made those covenants and those promises and agreements with our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they cannot be disannulled to this day. Why? Because that's what it is to be chosen. Although we are defiled, 
Hey, we can repent and the most high can hey clean us off, sanctify us, and hey, set us back as the praise of the earth is written in his word. See what I'm saying? Let me bring this out in the book of Matthew 24 and verse 14 as I do every week. Lord willing, this was edifying. Because I came out here to touch on prophecy. But hey, that lets you know. I, I said Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Let me bring that out first. But hey, this is why we come out. The ministry of reconciliation. To reconcile the children back with the father. If we have a lesson in mind and Jake come with sincere questions, hey, we got to drop everything. And we have to answer them according to thus says the Lord. In hopes, hey, that they head be sealed and we're one man closer to getting up out of here. All right? This is Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5, and it reads, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them as the Lord our power in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous is the law which I have set before you this day. Right? What nation? Right? This is the law that endures forever. Right? Let me see if I can find that in the book of Baruch. Right? This is what our people need to bring to remembrance. Right? This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. It reads, This is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. And all they that keep it shall come to life. But such as leave it shall die. And I told Jake, if you don't want to conform and repent, you're going to die. And he acted like that was just something that was far-fetched. Now the wages of sin is death. And for you to just turn your back to, thus says the Lord, you have a death wish. This is two-thirds of our people. Hey, and this is why we're the hopeful elect. I don't have a ticket up out of here. Jay kept saying, do you think you're better than me? No, I know I'm not better than you. This is why I've taken this on as my vocation. I pick up the plow and I'm walking, I'm bearing my cross. In addition to having to serve out my sentence, I also have to come out here and wake up the dead of our people and hasten the day of our deliverance. You see that? Now let me bring this out of Matthew 24 and 14. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 14, and it reads, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right? Just like Jake that walked up today, claiming Zoe, claiming Moore's Science Temple, claiming Marcus Garvey and Noble Drew Ali. He got marked today. He knows the name and he knows that he was walking in error. He's been warned. So now he's either gonna take that and build upon it or continue to circle the drain until he meets his destruction. Because it says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Like it says in John 15 and 22, hey, the Lord sending his prophets out in every land. Why? Because his people are scattered in every land as pursuing the Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Therefore, they're not going to have a cloak. They're not going to be able to use ignorance as an excuse. Starting with the prophets and apostles of Great Millstone, they have the truth. Those men are in every state, in every major city, on every country. You have men that have gone out to do what? Warn the people that age, the day of reckoning is coming not only for the so-called white man chiefly but these heathen roundabout as well as two-thirds of our people that don't want to get right we're not going to perpetually be at the bottom of every facet of society but rather we're going to be the praise of the earth but before the end comes the most high is long suffering he's merciful 
He's gracious and to his elect. Right? He's not just going to bring the end, but he's going to allow that good news to go out. And for the elect to take hold to the good news and be saved out of the impending destruction. Right? Hey, so with that, I'd like to end by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rekakadash. Once again, Yahweh, that's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh Shah is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He was a Hebrew as pursuing the Hebrews 7 and 14. Jesus Christ is a Greek title. Our Lord and Savior, his proper name is Yahweh Shah. And double honors, many blessings, and a big salute to the elders, apostles, and the bishops of the Great Millstone. And the many brothers laboring worldwide that have adopted that doctrine and take hold of that doctrine and are standing boldly as prisoners of hope doing everything they can to make their calling and election sure from week to week, day to day. We are in the last days. So, hey, y'all brothers stay strong, continue to pray, as well as watch, fast, repent, die daily. Hey, with that, y'all by